What's the word, y'all? So far, the Milwaukee Bucks don't look very good. Now, I don't want you to take that and think that I'm saying that they can't win a championship or they'll never get their stuff together, but through the first four games, I, uh, you know? Don't want to overreact, obviously. There's so much basketball left to be played, but there, as of right now, are some fundamental things that don't look too exciting. I forgot to say this, a new episode of the Kenny Beachin Podcast just dropped. Right now we are the fifth ranked basketball podcast in America, which is dope, but I want number four, the number three, the number two, and number one. I think it's a really good show. I worked very hard on it. Link is in the description. Go show us some love, please. I appreciate you. First of all, I want to say there were a lot of teams out there that made big time moves this off season. The Suns, the Boston Celtics, the, the Milwaukee Bucks, so on and so forth. A lot of teams made major adjustments. And I was pretty confident going into the season that all the teams to make these big changes the Bucks will be the one team that wouldn't take too much time to jail. I saw Damian Lillard, I saw Giannis Antetokounmpo, Brooke Lopez, and so on and so forth, and I thought that they were just a match made in heaven. And through the first four games, you can compare them to the other teams that made big-time moves. They're the one that looks the clunkiest, that doesn't look as smooth. The Boston Celtics just beat a team by 51 points. The boys look good. And the Bucks. A little bit less than that. But one thing I failed to even realize is that the Boston Celtics were taking a system that they developed the previous season and just adding pieces to it. While the Milwaukee Bucks are taking a team, adding pieces to it, but also incorporating an entirely new system under Adrian Griffin. Now, there's been a lot of conversations about the offense of the team, and for good reason. Um, this is a team that I thought immediately with the two guys that are up top, they would have one of the most effective and most dangerous high pick and rolls in the entire league. And the numbers say that it's successful, but the frequency of it is not great. The most we've seen the high pick and roll between Damian Lillard and Giannis was the opening night of the season where I think they ran it 11 different times. Then after that, it was single digit, single digit, and I don't got the, the info in front of me from their recent game versus the Toronto Raptors, but I just rewatched it. It wasn't many times. So this, this I don't know, weapon that I thought they were going to use a bunch and be super effective, they just haven't done it. I mean, I don't think I need to show you this, but I just want to show you that um, the effectiveness of a Damian Lillard pick and roll, and this is not even accounted for being Giannis, it could be really anybody, is still the fifth best pick and roll points per possession in all of basketball. But the frequency being at 39% is just a lot lower than what I anticipated. So because of that, I'm not extremely worried about the offense. The offense has been f f fine, I guess, even without them using the weapon that I think they're going to use a ton I think there's more red flags on their defense, if anything. Because even though they're not using the pick and roll as often as I, as I hope, I honestly watch this, this team and watch Damian Lillard, and it really does feel on the offensive side of the ball, he is just trying to feel out where he fits in. Which is a lot different than what Giannis was anticipated, because Giannis said before the beginning of the season that this is Damian Lillard's team. Um, so eventually, I guess Damian Lillard will realize that and will get more shot attempts because the other night against the Atlanta Hawks, he shot two of 12, which is obviously one of the worst Damian Lillard performances in his career. And then tonight, as I record this, he only attempted nine shots against the Toronto Raptors, which is the lowest amount of shots he has attempted since 2018. A five years, like this is just not the Dame we know. And I think that his volume is going to go up with time. I do want to give a lot of credit to the Toronto Raptors because though I'm talking about how bad the ball, the Milwaukee Bucks look right now, I want to give love to Toronto. This is crazy because 48 hours ago, th th their fans were feeling really upset about everything because the offense wasn't gelling. Defense has been great, but for the most part, uh, they couldn't score. And then today they scored a bunch of points. And now the same fans that I saw that were really sad are like, hey, maybe it's maybe it's not that bad. That's just that's just what fandom is at the end of the day. So the offense, I think, will, will come with time. The defense is the stressor, though. I and many people that, that talked about this trade when it happened recognize the fact that when you trade a guy like Drew Holiday and insert a guy like Damian Lillard into the lineup, you're going to see defensive drop off with regardless. And that has been the case. But as of right now, four games to the season, they are the 29th ranked defense in basketball. And that is just not good enough. I, I mean, I, that's not breaking any news, but that's just not good enough. We should have probably known what was about to happen um, when this came out, um, his role going into the season that he's going to have to take the toughest assignment most nights. And they're talking about Malik Beasley. And when this came out a month and a half ago, everybody in NBA Twitter was scratching their heads because we've watched 
Malik Beasley play basketball for the last, what, five, how many years been in the league? Five, six years or so. This is not who he is. So the fact that they had to be one of two things. They just don't have the personnel to be to have somebody be the stopper, or Malik Beasley just turned great defensively overnight. And it's not the second one. I, I'm telling you, it's not the second one because I've watched every single Bucks game so far. Now I don't want to say that he is the reason for the poor defense. I'm just saying that, that they're missing Drew Holiday. But not only just that, the scheme that Adrian Griffin is incorporated right now is just so much different than what we're used to seeing for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks, the entire Giannis superstar era, they have been a well above average defense. For some years, they were the best, the second best. I think their championship year, I think they were 10th in the regular season, but still they were always really, really good and they had a defensive identity. Giannis won his DPOYs by being one of, if not the greatest help defender in all of basketball. And now with his new role, because of the change of personnel and the change of the coaching staff, we're not seeing as much as of Giannis on the help. And the way they cover the number one play in all of basketball, the pick and roll, doesn't fit the personnel that they have. Brick Lopez has been a runner up to DPOY because mostly because of the way they defended their pick and rolls and the way they had this cover. So you can see Javon Carter's fighting over the screen, but is that Usman Garaba and that's Jalen Green. You're going to see right here, Brooke Lopez is going to drop heavy. He's always, well, not always, but for the most part, he's heavy on drop coverage defensively. And I want to say this video is created by Hoops by Nick. I'll put the link in the description. And this is an older video, maybe a year or so old, but this is just a way for me to showcase how they've been able to defend so great defensively. They've been a team that have forced their opponent to take mid-range jump shots. They make you take mid-range jump shots, even if that's not your, your thing. They run you off the three-point line, and then they run drop coverage, and, and we either have um, Giannis, but mostly Brooke Lopez, protecting the paint. And that was their formula, where their frequency of their opponents taking shots at the rim was the best in basketball. You did not get rim touches against the Milwaukee Bucks over the last couple years. Last year, they attempted the, they, their defense forced you to, how do I even word this? You weren't taking three point shots against the Milwaukee Bucks. They ran you off the line. All right, okay, cool. Even on something like this, a dribble handoff, Nicholas Claxton is not a threat up there. And even though we trust is that Joe Harris is a shooter, we're going to trust Grayson Allen getting over there way more. So Brooke just sit, sits back. Is that, is that Joe here? I can't, hey, it's a little blurry for me. Your brother ain't got his glasses. But Brooke just stays home. Stays home the entire time. And then there he is once Nicholas Claxton finally gets the ball straight up. I mean, that could have probably been a foul. But nonetheless, that's what he was doing. Now it's completely different. Now I'm, I'm using this clip and not one against the Toronto Raptors because the Raptors don't run a, a ton of pick and roll. They was just hooping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they played against the Atlanta Hawks the other day, and they got dogged by the Atlanta Hawks, who's who, their frequency of pick and rolls is, is crazy. So this is a good example. You know, this is an action by Trey Young. Obviously, Trey Young is one of the more ball-dominant pick and roll players in all the basketball. Him and Clint Capella have had a really good connection over the last, I don't know how many years. But here's a double screen, and as you can see, this is just different. Watching Brooke Lopez be at the point of attack on a pick and roll for 48 minutes or however many minutes he played just was eye-opening for me because that's just not what we've seen him do. They've done a ton. They've, they've forced a ton of ball pressure. That is their new goal under Adrian Griffin. Ball, ball, ball pressure, ball pressure, ball pressure. So they ask Brooke Lopez to fight up mostly because maybe they don't trust Malik Beasley and these other guard chasers to be able to get through these screens. So now in order to prevent Trey Young from having this much space in an open three-point shot, Brooke Lopez is asked to come all the way up. And boom, there's a trap. Trey Young being as poised as he is, he has his eyes on Jalen. So that means Giannis, oh my God, I see his eyes are there. I'm going to go contest Jalen. And just the eye fake gets Clint Capella wide open. And boom, that is a dunk. Right now, opposing teams are shooting 85% from the paint against the Milwaukee Bucks. 85%. And my calculations last year has it at 64%. So that is a huge, huge gap, huge difference. Now the saving grace in all of this is that they're not giving up a ton of shots at the rim. But when you're there, it's typically wide open. With this new coverage, they're still trying to get you to, to take more mid-range jump shots. 
but they're not nearly running people off the line as much. I want to say shout out to Eric Neem for, for that clip. Just made it easy for me. So um, the, the defense is just the major problem. The offense right now is about league average through four games. And again, I'm assuming that Dame is going to get his stuff together and Giannis is going to become more dominant. But it's a matter of can they get the defense to work? Because we're confident that they're going to be able to win a good amount of regular season games. But when it's time to win 16 games after, what what is that, April 15th or so, their defense needs to be good to great in order to get there. Um, and, and right now, because the offense is league average, it's not compensating for the terrible defense. So they need to get either elite at one place or just pretty good at both. And I, I don't know if they're gonna do that just yet so let me know what you think about the milwaukee bucks through the first four games bucks fans specifically who've watched every single second how are you feeling about the pairing i'm not overreacting too much but i thought it was something worth pointing out to y'all